Jill Dando was one of Britain's biggest TV stars when she was shot dead on her doorstep just after 11.30am on Monday, April the 26th, 1999. The body of a woman was found outside number 29 Gowan Avenue. There's a lady slumped outside Jill Dando's house. That woman has been identified as Jill Dando, the television presenter. I did hear a, a, a scream. I mean, this is an evil and senseless act. Her murder remains unsolved. 25 years on, a Daily Mirror investigation has found that CCTV of a man police wanted to question, who we have called Man X, matches the features of a Serbian Secret Services assassin. The smartly dressed man was pictured shortly after the shooting, acting suspiciously on the gunman's suspected escape route. A facial comparison expert has now found a number of similarities between Man X and the Serbian double convicted murderer. Jill Dando, one of the biggest stars of British television, had been shot dead on her doorstep in Fulham, South West London. The emergency call was timed at 11.48 a.m. on April the 26th. Um, so something collapsed um, confidentially. It looks like it's Jill Dando. And, oh my God, no, I don't think she's alive. <laughs> the killer had struck around 17 minutes earlier. The assassin fired a single shot and the bullet passed through her brainstem, killing her instantly. The silencing of the shot and the targeting of the brainstem indicated the killer handled weapons professionally. Jill's murder shocked the nation and led to one of the biggest homicide investigations ever conducted in the UK. The Operation Oxborough team interviewed more than 2,500 people, took over 1,000 statements, traced 1,200 cars and produced 3,700 exhibits. And a total of £250,000 reward money was never claimed. A year after the murder, local resident Barry George, who suffered from severe learning difficulties, was arrested. When was the last time that you saw Jill Dando? I have never seen Jill Dando. He was convicted, but later cleared of the killing. It remains one of Britain's most notorious unsolved murders, but police have not touched the files for over 10 years. With the 25th anniversary approaching, a mirror investigation has found that Man X who was caught on CCTV close to the murder scene, matches the features of a Serbian secret service assassin, Milorad Ulamek. At the time Jill was killed in 1999, Ulamek headed the assassination department of the Serbian secret services, the JSO. Like the description of Man X, he was in his 30s and was of similar build and height. Only three days prior to Jill's murder, British and US planes had bombed the Radio Television Serbia building in Belgrade, killing 16 civilian employees, including journalists. It came 48 hours after NATO bombed a separate TV station, owned by President Slobodan Milosevic's daughter. We haven't waited until for today 30 to start targeting at the crucial infrastructure of, of the Belgrade government. The television station is a source of propaganda that is prolonging this war and causing untold suffering to the people of Kosovo. This is a war, this is a serious conflict, and untold horrors are being done. The propaganda machine is prolonging the war and it's a legitimate target. And within hours of Jill's killing, a call was made claiming the murder was in response to the bombings. At the time, the UK was effectively at war with Serbia, and the Crime Watch presenter had made an appeal for Kosovan refugees who were being massacred by Serbian forces three weeks before she was murdered. And arrived on the borders of neighbouring countries. This is a massive exodus, around 600,000 people are on the move. Ulamek is currently serving a 40-year jail sentence in his home country for the murder of Serbia's former president Ivan Stambolic in 2000 and the country's first democratically elected Prime Minister, Zoran Zinjic, in 2003. The ex-French foreign legionnaire and gangster is understood to have learned English while living in London as a young man. He is Serbia's most infamous paramilitary soldier, and human rights groups say his units were responsible for some of the worst atrocities in the Yugoslav wars of the 1990s. Known by his nickname, Le Jeja, he also calls himself Lukovic, a name he took from his former wife. 
A facial recognition expert has found a number of similarities between the Serbian and the man in CCTV at Putney Bridge tube station minutes after Jill was murdered. His report concluded that no differences were found between the two. Ulamek also bears a striking resemblance to a sweating man efit of a suspect who got off the 74 bus at Putney Bridge station minutes after Jill was shot. This is the man who is described as sweating heavily. The sweat had reached into his collar of his shirt and that is what drew the attention to the witness. This is the man who had a mark on the bridge of his nose as if perhaps he'd been wearing spectacles. He is the man who described as being smart wearing a dark suit. Who is this man? We would ask him if he has nothing to do with this investigation to come forward and eliminate himself. Certified forensic video analyst Emmy Polito, who gives expert evidence for the police, found Ulamek has a dent on his nose like the one highlighted in the sweating man e-fit. Mr Polito said Man X, the man in the CCTV image and the Serb killer have a similar shaped mouth, chin, hairline and right side burn, while the general shape and sizes of their noses and right ear were the same. But Mr Polito could only give limited support to them being the same person because of lack of detail in the blurry still of the CCTV image. The report concluded, within the imagery limitations, no differences were found between Man X and Mr Ulamek. Mr Polito said that it could be possible to make a more definitive finding if better quality CCTV was obtained. Ulamek's lawyer said his client did not wish to comment when asked if he murdered Jill. He wrote, I inform you that my client has been made aware of this and that he is not interested in participating. We have examined hundreds of pages of police files and witness statements to piece together what could really have happened to Jill. They show that sometime before 3pm on the day of Jill's murder, a call was made to the BBC by an unidentified man saying in possibly an Eastern European accent, Tell your Prime Minister in Belgrade, 15 people were killed, so 14 more to go. Just three days before the murder, British and US planes had bombed the Radio Television Serbia building in Belgrade, killing 16 employees. On April 27th, a day after Jill's murder, documents show that another call was made to the BBC at 11.09am, directly threatening the then BBC News Chief Executive, Tony Hall. Officers' notes show that the caller had a foreign voice, possibly East European. Yesterday I called to tell you to add a few more numbers to the list. Your government and Prime Minister Blair murdered, butchered 17 innocent young people who work, like makeup artists, electrical technical engineers, and these type of people. He butchered, we butchered back. The first one you had yesterday, the next one will be Tony Hall. The call was made from an 0181 number with 150 incoming lines, meaning it was never traced, police files show. On April 28th, a call was received at BBC Belfast at 12.51pm saying You at the BBC are the voice of your government. That's why your reporter is dead because your government killed 17 innocent people only with the purpose of making a point. Blowing up our television station for only taking it out of the sky for 6 hours killing 17 innocent people. You have now won and your station will be next. Now, 25 years on, the mirror can reveal that the Met were in possession of the original CCTV of the Putney Bridge tube station man within two weeks of the murder. It showed the man in a dark suit and tie walking into the station, buying a ticket and then walking through the barriers. Seconds later, he turned around and left the station after going back out through an exit barrier. Detectives suspected he was working with a getaway driver in a blue Range Rover that was spotted before and after the murder. Detective Chief Inspector Hamish Campbell told Jill's inquest that the man resembling the efit of the suspect was seen getting on a number 74 bus minutes after the shooting. He was reportedly sweating heavily and speaking into a mobile phone. The bus, which was not fitted with CCTV, took him from the Fulham Palace Road to Putney Bridge tube station. The driver came forward to say he had picked up the EFIT suspect at the Fulham Palace road stop. Detectives assessed CCTV footage taken in and around the station, suspecting that was the route he took. But they never released images of Man X. Scotland Yard confirmed earlier this month that the man remains unidentified.